There are lots of ways to grip the club. You can have an interlock grip, you can have an overlap grip, you can even have a 10 finger grip. You can have a weak grip where your thumbs are more on top, or you can have a strong grip where your thumbs are more on the side. Any combination of those you can play really great golf with, it comes more down to personal preference and what matches well with the other things that you're doing in your swing. But there is one thing that you have to get correct with the grip if you wanna have power and consistency, and this is one thing that I see so many players get wrong, and that is how our lead hand attaches to the club. So if you look here, I have some pads on my hand, and it's very easy to see on the grip, because the, the, or on the glove here, because it shows them. So I have my heel pad here, and I have my thumb pad here. When I see players struggle, they have the thumb pad more on top of the grip. And when you do that, it puts it too much in the hands, in the palm of the hands here, and it puts you at a mechanical disadvantage because it doesn't allow you to get this club, to get this club to hinge up very much in the downswing. You get the club lagging behind you. And when I do that, I'm not gonna be able to get that whip of speed through impact because I'm gonna be dumping my angles very quickly. And I'm also not gonna be able to get the hands ahead of the golf ball impact to get shaft lean and to deal off the face to give me that really good compression. So I'm losing speed and I'm losing compression and it's gonna be very, very difficult to play good golf when you're doing that. So we wanna learn the proper way to put the lead hand on the grip and I have an awesome drill that makes it so easy. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna start out here, you're just gonna create a hook with your pointer finger and you're gonna put the, set the club down in that hook. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your heel pad and put that on top of the grip. And remember, players that struggle, put the thumb pad on top of the grip. We wanna put the heel pad on top of the grip. And if you can support the club like I'm doing right here, then you know that you're doing it correct. If I don't put it, my heel pad enough on top of the grip, if I put it right there, it's gonna to tend to wanna to come out of my hand just like that. So just set your, create your hook with your pointer finger, support the club, and then from there, you can wrap your other fingers on there, put your thumb down, and then you can also put your other hand on there as well. Now this works with whether you have a weak grip, a neutral grip, or a strong grip. So if I have a weaker grip, what I'm going to do is when I put this club and I set it in my hook, I'm gonna set it down more in the lower part of my finger. All right, so I'm creating my hook, I'm gonna put it more in the lower part of the finger, Now I'm gonna put my, my heel pad on top, and there I go, I have my, my weak grip, but I have my left hand on there, my lead hand on there in the correct way. Now, if I have a stronger grip, that club is gonna be supported more on the tip of my finger. So if I create my hook, it's gonna be more on the top of my finger there. My heel pad's gonna be more on top, right? And there I have my strong grip. Now, to put the lead hand on there, also very easy. We have the heel pad and the thumb pad, and between those, we have what's called the lifeline of the hand. Now, that lifeline of the hand is what's gonna come into contact with the thumb of your lead hand. Now, if you're someone that struggles with getting the club face closed, you tend to leave the face open, you hit a lot of slices and things like that, where a lot of pushes out to the right for a right-handed golfer, you're gonna wanna put that lifeline more on the side of your thumb. So if I have my grip here, I'm gonna wanna put my, my lifeline more on the side of my thumb, and that puts my trail hand in a stronger position, which makes it a lot easier to get that club face closed, right? Now, if I'm struggling with getting the ball too far to the left, right, or hooking a lot of shots, I'm struggling with getting the club face too closed, you may wanna put that lifeline more on top of the thumb, more on top of the thumbnail, and that's gonna put your trail hand in a weaker position, which is gonna make it easier for you not to close the face too much. So depending on the issue that you have there will be what you wanna do. So play around with that to find what works best uh, for you. Now, to train this is very easy. I have a lot of students that I work with, and when we make a grip change, they always, tell me how hard it is to make a grip change. Because in the beginning, it is very awkward. But making a grip change is actually one of the easiest things to change because you can work on it a lot more. So if you're strategic about when you're working on it, it makes it very easy. So what I'd recommend doing is have a club at the office, have a club in the kitchen, have a club next to your recliner or something like that. So that way, whenever you're do doing a conference call at the office or you're cooking or you, know, you need to wait or you're watching the news, you, know, you can just pick up the club and start working on it. And I'm telling you, you work on this for 10, 15 minutes a day for a week or two, it's, it's gonna become very, very easy. It's a very easy thing to train. There aren't a lot of things you can train with your swing that happen that quickly, right? So have it by you, do the drill, create the hook, support the club, wrap your hand around there, then put your lead, or excuse me, your trail hand on there. And you can even take a swing if you have some space, then take your lead hand off, start over, 
and, and start doing it again, go through it 10 to 15 minutes a day, I'm telling you the grip change is gonna be very, very easy. And when, when I do that, when I get the club in the hook of my hand, I get the club in the right place in my lead hand, now I'm able to create lag in the start of my downswing here. I'm able to get that club lagging behind me so now I can whip the club through contact and I can also get the hands in front and that's where we're gonna get our compression, our power. We're gonna play some much more consistent golf when you do that. So work on those, correct your grip, and start playing some better golf. So now that we've got the hand in the correct way on the club, now we can start working on the transition of the downswing. To me, this is one of the most important parts of the golf swing because if we don't have the club in the right place from the top of the swing to this lead arm parallel position, it just makes it very, very difficult to be any good because from here to the golf ball, it's a split second. So if that club is out of position, there, you're gonna have to make some sort of compensation really quickly and everything gets dependent on timing and you're gonna be really inconsistent when you do that. So what I recommend doing is working on getting this club in the correct place and getting this club face in a more square position and getting that club in the right position on the downswing. So that way you can stay in your posture, you can just turn through, you can just turn through basically as hard as you can and you know you're gonna have that club in the right place and that face square every single time. So I have a bonus video for you where Clay Ballard, the founder of Tossby Golf, is gonna show you one of my favorite drills to get this right, and that is the tennis ragged drill. So I'm gonna play a preview of that drill here in just a second, but if you'd like to see the whole video, all you have to do is click the iCard that's gonna appear up in the corner of the screen. If you don't see the iCard, no worries, just click the link in the description below. Play well, and I'll talk to you soon. Good player problems. We're gonna talk about shallowing that club shaft out as we're starting down as we're doing this rotating of the face that we worked, about, worked on in the last video. As we start this downswing, what you'll see with, with basically all uh, of the, the top players is instead of coming kind of over the top and letting the hands come out away from their body, letting the club come out away from their body, again coming down steep into the ball and then having to open up, kind of fillet open the face and add loft to it, the flattening of the shaft should happen as soon as we start down. So as we start this downswing, what we want to have happening here you can imagine that if I draw a line from the hosel of my club up through my right elbow, that's my swing plane line, my elbow plane. As I go to the top of the swing, I'm gonna be slightly above that. And then as I start down, I want my hands to start to shallow out. I want the club to shallow out inside of this elbow plane. And at the same time, I'm gonna be rotating.